do you have a question? I'm confused. No, woman. I just wanted to tell Claude about my thesis and discuss his bleaker death in Venice street period. Of course I have a question, you silly girl. Claude, I saw robots. Big fan, and that's praise indeed coming from me. I normally hate anything humanity has achieved since 1836. But one thing fascinated me. Claude, about the show, the pants. They were so tight, so fitted. How do you get such a marvelous, close, sequin figure hugging fit and still? Hmm? Oh, and were the sequins a reference to lasers? Yes, yes, my, my, I agree. Thanks for calling. That is an important question. You see, I'm an important person, and I especially think so. It is really important for people to see my form move through space in very tight pants, or the effect is ruined. Interpretive dance cannot be expressed in baggy clothing. It's like a violin parade. Otherwise, why have a love story with a manatee and the lasers? It's very important. You're kind of creepy. You're nothing like you are on the show. You're so funny there, joking with the family and putting out the fire started by the homeless guy and starting group hugs. But in real life, you're just plain creepy. You won't even tell us how old Jimmy is. All you talk about is Archie stuff like that nobody understands because it's complicated and how tight your pants are. That's not true. I also discussed love and passion and amenity and the lasers. You, my dear, could use all three. You, my dear, are a Philistine. I'm sorry, but this is one of the most degrading, debasing, horrific, unedifying, opportunistic things I have ever done in my life since that whole Rake's Progress lawnmower commercial. I feel dirty, like I just sat in something. You did. Our last guest was taken violently ill. Yes, well, such is the plight of radio. Rather than grumble like Leporello or a taxi driver about my duties cleaning the back seat, I shall bid you adieu. Okay, thanks, Claude. Next, we have a very important guest who doesn't dance like a weird jerk. We'll be back right after this. You're on K-Chat. Knights of the Road, here's your stallion. The car for freedom. Freedom. The car for hot excitement. Excitement. The car for a man who is alone against the elements. The Waibatsu Thunder. The pride is back. It's the power of a compact. It's so big. Fuel injected. Inject me. By Batsu Thunder. On the toll road of life, you have to pay to prove you can. Live the emotion of an individual. The awesome power of nature distilled into one vehicle. Because after you get struck by lightning, there's thunder. The Waibatsu Thunder. <laughs> What's this I found under your bed? The only angles you're going to read is Laura Engels Wilder. If you think your child might be a red, here are some warning signs. They read complicated literature and have concern for their fellow man. They even like to share. Tell your kids if someone approaches them with pamphlets about recycling, an invitation to a labor rally, or showing any doubts about the fairness of our system, then they should find a teacher or a policeman immediately. Do yourself a favor. Take both hands off the wheel and touch the steering wheel. Do you feel the power? Ah, yes, friend. There's a lot of evil in the world, but there is also you. And I have been sent to shine a light on all degenerates, philanderers, liberals, and other evildoers, and expose them for what they really are. Don't waste your money on unnecessary and corrupting material possessions. Give it to me. There's only one thing that will save you. A highly fortified structure in the shape of the most powerful thing on the planet. Me. Degenerates will ruin this great city. In my wonderful book, I tell of the impending disaster about to befall this planet. Nuclear holocaust, plagues of flying rodents, the seas rising up and turning yellow. It is coming. It is written by me, but you can save your city. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. 
Hi, and welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're listening to K-Chat, Vice City's only commercial talk station, the place where the stars shine in conversation with you and me. I'm Amy Schechenhausen. My next guest is a rising star in the world of North mythology. He's appeared in several best-selling infomercials and travels the globe speaking at corporate training camps. His books and audio cassettes are sold around the world. <laughs> He is Valhalla's finest deity and motivational speaker, Thor. Hi. Hello, Amy. I'm happy to be here. It's been a long journey. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know much about you. I mean, I read Beowulf. Well, I didn't, but I read the cover. But, like, you're a Viking, right? Did the tunic and goatskin boots give you a clue, maybe? I am a Viking, and a Viking that will not only help you unleash the Furies, but unleash yourself. It's in my Thor's Norse Power program. Okay, I'm a little confused. Well, I'm a lot confused. I was taught in school that Vikings were bloodthirsty and violent. An elder once told me, you must unlearn what you have learned. Of course, then he died of the green plague. There are some Vikings that are a bloodthirsty lot, yes, but no more than anyone else, really. We're a nomadic people, Amy. We have cold fire in our souls. We have that fire too, Amy. You've just lost it since you've gotten television. Now, that being said, I'll answer your question. We are mostly nonviolent, though many of the Vikings travel to Scotland. And mind you, anyone who goes there will turn bloodthirsty. You can't understand what the lot are saying. It's all a four, reckless, a boot, diné. It's enough to make you want to burn a village to the ground. That's why, in my cassette series, I talk about the importance of communication. You see, Amy, men and women live in different worlds. We use different words. A group of men talk about what they've killed, how to start a fire, who has the best long boat. Women want to talk about keeping the community long or tidy and their feelings. When I'm raiding a village, I don't need to be talking about feelings. It's time for action. Great. So is that all there is to being a Viking? Pillaging? No, lass, no. Pillaging and battle are important, but we admire poetry as well. As long as it's poems about whacking someone in with a double-handed battle axe. What's holding you back, Amy? In chapter three of my book, I talk about listening to the bloodthirsty water spirit. It's really quite important if you want to enter Valhalla. I think I went there last night. Oh, no, mm -mm, that was Malibu. But it's the same sort of thing. Valhalla was that golf club, wasn't it? So, 1983. But right, what does being a Viking have to do with anything? This is the 20th century. We have electricity, penicillin, jet planes, implants. Well, I don't, but I want some, but I heard the operation is really gross. You live like it's 982 AD or something. Mind ye tongue, wench, yeah, lest I cut it out. Deep down, all of you listening to me say, Thor, yes, I'd like to unleash the Viking within. Maybe you go camping once a year or hunting and wonder why it feels so natural. That's because it is. Too much of this denying your instincts. Men shaving. You know, deep down in the pit of your soul, you wish you could crouch in the grass with flies biting your face, afraid to move for fear of alerting the beasts, covering yourself with yak urine to thwart your spell. Then, a beast draws close. You bounce, bringing your battle axe on its skull. Man and animal at that moment, one and the same in a terrible beauty. Then you drag the carcass back to camp and celebrate by eating its heart. Some people, they only do this once in a lifetime. I do this every day, and so can you. All it takes is some positive thinking. Just attend my Unleash the Norse Within weekend. When you are finished, you will say, I am a god. Nobody can stop me. I crush my enemies and dance on their funeral pyres. This is very helpful for living in suburbia, Amy, and I should know. I really don't understand how. Oh, it's very helpful. Maybe a neighbor is tossing his leaf clippings on your lawn, or looking at your woman, or harboring desires regarding your longboat. You enslave his children, set his house on fire, he shall not bother you again. <laughs> it must be nice to have you as a neighbor, not. I live in no place longer than needed to fulfill my goals. Taking slaves, valuables, and food. Goal setting is very important, Amy, not just in football. You're very weird and creeping me out a bit, but whatever. No weirder than anything else. So, what do you think of Vice City? Ah, I like it very much. Your women here are prepared for battle. They are large, not like those scrawny things to the north. A woman who weeps well provides for her man. You cannot set sail for robbing and pillaging on an empty stomach. It's like the story of the parson's wife and the troll. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Great Carl Erson, ye mainlanders have no historical perspective. Read the runes. It's all right there. Talk to a grandparent. But no, he casts people out like rubbish. 
Wisdom is not to be treated so lightly. When my father grew old, I sat with him day and night, absorbing his wisdom, learning about the demons and where the wickedness resides in men's hearts. Then as his time grew near, I built a large pyre, burnt him and his wife while communing with Odin's spirit. Careful, Musty Pines is a sponsor of the show. Oh, Grody, what are you doing? I'm just adjusting myself, she-devil. Wearing these animal hides does get a bit itchy. Um, okay. You never answered my question. What do you think of Vice City? Your land and people have a lot in common with mine. You see, we too fed our homes through the lack of food, overpopulation, and the bitter cold. And, mind you, darting out to raid passing ships is fine, but we needed a new land to have our way with. Granted, we roll and sail to an area, land in force, and burn down a local monastery or village, whereas you come in, destroy all the creatures, and sow plastic versions of them. You did a fine job pillaging these lands, but we should have done something about Canada. Wait a minute there, Buster. My mother's half Canadian. Oh, what are you going to do, Wench? Sweep the ice furiously at me? Ha! Huh. Socialized medicine? Nah, you did it all wrong. You should have continued to the north and finished things off. I talk about this in me motivational learning tapes. That and beware the magpie. This is the devil. Evil reigneth when darkness falls. Are you married? You seem like a tough character to live with. Hi, my wife Helga. What a hag. This show is not sexist, whatever certain bearded women might say. Women are people too. I'd appreciate if you wouldn't talk that way. Ah, go live in a chimney, you troll. The 20th century women are all the same. And me hag Helga, she felt crazier up any ways. She says to me, Thor, I ain't having no mead no more. I'm going to meetings. See? That's your problem. As soon as you sort something out, you have to go preaching from the rooftops to everyone else how to live, not pillage nor plunder no more, but live in boxes. Then she says, Thor, I'm getting me stomach stapled. I look fat, and now fit as two yak skins, where previously it was only one. I say, wench, don't come crying to me when we're in a longboat crossing the straits for two moons, and you're all skin and bones. A man needs something to grab onto. I ain't her fault. A cursed pixie goblin got her. Pixie goblin? What kind of weird ancient nonsense are you talking about? Now, Thor, I've got to ask you, how old are you? I am as old as a fjords, as young as a newborn lamb. Are you shy about your age? <laughs> Just lie about it, like my mom. Thor is never shy. Thor is mighty. Thor is a god. And where are you from? From the beginning of the flat earth, where the sun meets the sky. Oh, right. By the beach. Great. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Thor. He's a real oh, Viking. Yeah, right. door, please. Hello, I am Fernando Martinez. I think by now you know I am an emotional guy. People stop me in the street and say, Fernando, what the hell is wrong with me? Silk shirt, hairy chest, enough aftershave to drown a household pet, but I still cannot get a woman. I tell them you are an ignorant fool. Without the symbol of power and fertility around your neck, what kind of woman is going to respect you? That is why I have teamed up with Medallion Man, the shop for medallion needs. Medallion Man caters to all levels of masculinity. For the strong, silent type, a medallion the size of a hubcap will say everything that needs to be said. Even singing medallions for the Casanova, who knows music is the food of love. Model trains, dollhouses, diapers, whatever your interest, we've got the medallion for you. Don't forget, everyone you know us, if you can't support a medallion, you can't support a family. We have some sad news for you. Rock and roll is dead and pop is in! Why not discover the excitement of the science of music yourself at Synth and Son, the home of keyboards. Thanks to the science of music, you don't need musical talent to make great music. Just listen. I created that just by pressing a button. Synthesizers are the new way. Why work hard on difficult compositions when a machine can make music better than you've ever dreamed of? You'll be the hit of the party. It's perfect for in-restaurant entertainment, cover bands, and funerals. Make fugues funky and death marches danceable. It's the science of music and synth, synth, synth and sun. Remember, you don't know you're a musician until you try. We're back on K-Chat with me, Amy, and my guest is Thor, Viking warrior and elf help guru. Do you have a last name? Oh, whatever. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about the wisdom of the ancients. There are many hurdles in life, Amy. I remember one of the first bits of fan mail I got, joined by Bottle in the Sea. A man of Lollard Island said, a tiny woman came to our farm and swept in front of our door. A woodland troll has carried off my woman in the dead of night. Give me wisdom, Thor. So, what did you tell him? Hi, Amy. It was obvious the Black Plague had visited his home. 
As sure as you can't be a midwife to a fairy, expect wisdom from a fool, or find a good meal downtown on a Saturday night. Okay. I don't, um, I really have nothing to ask you because I really don't think we're bonding quite right here. I'm more than a little confused. Let's go to the phones. You're on K-Chat with Thor. Yes, hello, Thor. My name's Jay. I'm a huge fan, man. Your book really helped me get through puberty. Everyone else was into vampires and stuff. I just got to the Viking thing. It's pretty cool. It's been working pretty well for me. Anyway, my girlfriend and I, we fight all the time. She's always calling to check up on me. It really totally sucks. It's a drag. Like, I hang out at the strip mall with all my boys, and she shows up. Is there any advice you can give me? Ah, uh, yes. There was a man who asked for a night's lodging at a certain farm on the eve of Monday Thursday. Or maybe it was Fat Tuesday. Anyway, in the course of the night, the old woman of the house took out a horn of salve and smeared herself with it from head to toe. She then climbed on top of the stove, sat astride a sweeping broom, and began to... Um, hello? Excuse me, what the hell are you talking about? Reading from the runes, wench! What kind of rune is that? Ah, it's a man's rune, and not appropriate for the warrior under 18 years old. But there's a moral at the end. Are you still there, Fair Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Do you love this woman? Yeah, I, I think so. She's really special. Especially in the back seat, if you know what I mean, Thor. Then behead her and parade that love around on a stick for the world to admire. Wow, cool. Thanks, Thor. Okay, I'd like to throw you out, but you've got an enormous sword and, uh, uh yeah. Let's take another call. But first, listeners, Vice City, remember, don't behead your girlfriend and take her head around on a stick. Hello, you're on K-Chat with Thor. Hey, brother, my name is TJ. Your book is fresh, real fresh. Like, it's been a real inspiration and all that. It's most definitely on me and my crew's vibe. And that Loki brother, he's a slick and salivate. You know what I mean, Trooper? In fact, me and my boys have started a Thor fan club. You know what I'm rapping? We're on your vibe, man. Hey, a Thor fan club. This pleases Thor very much. I shall speak of myself in the third person from now on. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't really into school all that much. But I hear you, Thor. So, so anyway, we have this fan club, right? And instead of naming it something like the Vice Lords of Valhalla, we gave it, like, a modern name. Keeping things firmly in the 80s, you know? The blood. Ain't that off the wall, man? We follow your hey, teachings to the letter, sir. Especially how you go around smiting fools with that wild mad hammer of yours and getting people to know exactly what time it is, you hear? Have you a magic hammer? Nah, T. We don't have any olden types around here to strap us with super fly hardware like yours, but we do have Mac-10, Tech-9, Tray-8, Street Sweepers, and all that. Are you still on my vibe, brother? Hey, I like the sound of this. Me thinks I want to join your group. Do you pillage proper? Hell yeah! We do it like a Viking. You ought to come party with us. We'll even make you an honorary blood. Word. Ah, indiscriminate pillaging. This is, as we say, the school of old. When I am done with the wench, we shall meet. <laughs> Till then, beware the frost giant, TJ. And the serpent with two tongues. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Yo, brother. Where'd you land that funky, fresh silver helmet of yours? Those wings on the side are wicked, money. Stop calling me a wench. I have much to teach you, Come wench back. Amy. Only if you would listen. For many centuries, people have asked questions. Why is my fatted calf gone after the gypsy woman appeared? Are there trolls living in my chimney? Aye, sure, I could tell ye the story of the 12 children on a platter, or the midsummer snow, and the spirit hatched from a cock's egg. But in the end, Amy, you need a spirit journey. A wandering spirit demands a wandering body. Take a long boat, pack only what you can carry, head toward the moon at high tide. Okay, thanks for the advice. And with that revelation, I'm going to have to change topics. That was Thor, Viking Warrior. Coming up next, we have another guest. We'll be back right after this. How do you like to enjoy a Rusty Brown's Ring Donut? I like to lick lovingly around the outside and then thrust my tongue in the middle. I like to munch it vigorously. I just love the batter all over my face. On Friday nights, I just can't stop eating Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Oh my god, it's so good. Sometimes I like to wear women's panties and walk around Fifth Street. When you go downtown, make sure you enjoy Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Hi, 
I'm Jeremy Robar, entrepreneur, VIP, and founder of the Revolutionary Program, Think Your Way to Success. It's a three-step program that's been changing lives and my income for the last two years. Five years ago, I was a nobody, just like you. After my Think Your Way to Success program, I spend the entire weekend in my jacuzzi or engaging in the exciting sport of domino toppling. Hey, if you can think it, you can do it. One of my award-winning courses is sure to be perfect for you. The first course I call Think, Hold That Thought, Complete, because that's what you do. Step two is known as Learn, Start, Doing, where I explain the mysteries of starting. Or take the new accelerated course that will have you laughing at ugly strangers. Motivate, demonstrate, then motivate again. Just listen to these endorsements, and remember, these people volunteered. They aren't being paid much. I've been on the Think Hold That Thought Complete program, and I have to say, I'm finally going to start my career in being a well-paid, rich person. Yeah, I've been thinking my way to success for a while now. It's some good stuff. Call now and sign up for my Think Your Way to Success program. And if you want to think really fast, try my Crank It Out program. Call 1-866-434-SELF. Hey, don't just do it. Think about it. Sweaty leather tracksuit? Absurdly fat Daglo laces? Something missing? <laughs> Complete the look with a replica car sign insignia on a chunky gold plate chain at Vice City's one-stop shop for people who know how to put the hip into hip-hop. Wow, you look fresh. Complete the look. God, can we play more commercials on this station? This station is about me. What? Oh, <laughs> hi, I'm Amy. So, right. We're back. I'm here with like, oh my god, this is so exciting. But now I'm here with Jazz Torrent, a rock god, all the way from Scotland, England. So Jazz, I'm sorry. As you can tell, ooh, I'm a really huge fan of Love Fest. Hey, 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 then he says sorry, babe. You are a woman of substance, and I like that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. That's cool. And, oh, Jazz, who is that thing with you? Andy, I think she's zoning out a little bit, aren't you, man? Look, she's got to take me 24-7, you know what I'm saying? Crew a lassie, she's had a turn of jazz more than one girl can take. Eh? Say hello, man. Hi, Paul. Bingo. Where are we? Uh, the rock lifestyle hasn't been too good to her. Man, just go away and sit in a lobby until I've finished, hey? Check the fridge. Is she okay? I mean, apart from being an ugly, cheap cow, she looks half dead. She, hey, hey, hey. Seriously, man, didn't it crap my style? I'm an artist, you know? Uh, okay, Jazzy. So, Jazz, I was listening to your album on my boombox thing all weekend. Yeah. Like, how is it? Uh, I mean, you know, you're really totally famous. No, wait, I mean, uh, like, so anyway, how are you? It's cool, man, I'm cool. Things are good. You can't OD on love, man. I have tried. But you are really something special. You Americans. You really know how to rock and roll, man. No like back home. I'm so confused. Is that because the new album didn't do so well in the UK? It's a fascist Thatcher. Sing about working class people trying to make it through a tough life. I sing about the things they want. Trashing hotel rooms, wearing glitter in your eyes, and waking up in a ditch next to a total sports car. When you make minimum wage, love conquers all. Know what I mean, Sheila? Uh, the name's Amy. <laughs> Aye, right, whatever. Like I was saying, man, right? I'm an artist. I ain't in this for the money. If I were, would I be wearing these clothes? It's because the critics don't know. Do you know? They stand there and they do not know. Have they ever really listened to the lyrics to bury me deep inside? Eh? If the music isn't what they want to hear, if the songs ain't the right songs, you know, if things aren't in their space or, or whatever, right, man? You know, that's my choice. You know, because, man, I am Love Fist. And the thing is, right, they're not, and if, if they don't get it, and if they're not riding my wave that day, man, well, you know, I ain't gonna go cry puppies just because their dog is teething, you know? As far as these idiots are concerned, I am a man. But I tell you, sweetheart, I've been over to the other side, baby. And man, oh man, it's beautiful, but these idiots, man, they've not been there. Okay, right. This last album wasn't your best selling, was it? I don't even think it charted in the UK. What is that chart? Piece of paper. Bring that to the concert and I'll set it on fire. I ain't no Ronald Reagan a rock, babe. Album charts are a metaphor for human isolation and the breakdown of interaction. I see it's time to rock. Right, man? Right, Jimmy. That's right, because I say it is. 
because sweetheart, I have to stall Van. I am Love Fist, the biggest band in the world. Yeah, but you and Dick and Percy and Willie, you're all Love Fist, the four Scottish horsemen of the apocalypse. Fist till morning. Take it on the chin. Zinc deficiency. Four boys against your face. Great tracks. What memories. And here you say you dedicate the album to the children of the night. Who are they? Let's get, on, let's get one thing straight here. Hello? We are recording here. This is for the record, right? Testing, testing, testing. Here, listen. Love Fist is Jez Torrance. I sing the songs, sweetheart. It's my face on the merchandise. You see us in concert, see four men rocking and dancing with tears in their eyes. You will see I am Love Fist. He who pays the piper plays the tune. I didn't know you had a piper in the band. Love, I was talking metaphorically. Condensed meaning, hey, enlightenment. We are family living in Death Valley. But I walk alone. I am on a spiritual journey. And if Dick Henry stands my way, the contract says I walk. I've been dragged back, held down, and embarrassed by those guys. But you know, it's part of being in a band, like wearing makeup. Yeah, but wasn't Percy voted Guitarist of the Year by Karap Rock Monthly? Look, look, I love the whole bit of Fuzzy Guitar because he's overweight and love, right? Without the torrents of abuse, Love Fist would be over. And the new contract reflects that. As an artist, it's really important that I make a lot of money. Right, man? You need to keep you and our friends and your diamonds and that, eh? Yeah, rock on, Keith, Roger, what a trip. Yeah, shut up, you silly top. Ugh. Let's take a caller. Hello. You're on the line with Love Fist. Hi. Yo, this is Wayne, man. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm on the phone with Love Fist. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jez? I'm a huge fan. I go to all your concerts. I get crazy. I wear my Love Fist t-shirt every day, even when I'm with my old lady. Hey, I heard the subliminal messages in your video. Is that true? Listen, seriously. The big hair, the limousines, the girls, the partying, the clubs, the hotel suites, another TV smashed into a thousand pieces, right? After my unfortunate incident in Cleveland, I told the press, I don't like Mondays. This livens up the day. If you're asking me if we was using Batman's car, the music is reversible, time is not. Do you want me to say, congratulations, you have just discovered the secret message. Dreams are made to be broken. Like so many broken dreams, I want to pick up the pieces together. God, I am so great. I think I've just wrote a song. Maybe I'll write a song for you, hey? But anyway, like I say, that stuff, it doesn't matter. For Not for me. I'm a spiritual person on a journey, right? And nothing will stand in my way, you know? Boy, do I. On the track Satan's Pillows, you sang about how a broken heart can... About how a broken heart can't ever be mended, just broken again. I know, really powerful stuff, emotional. I think that song says everything that needs to be said about love, man. When you belong to the night, it's best to take advantage of it. And what takes you up will take you down, man. If everyone remembered that, the world would be okay. Thanks, love. You are a real smart cookie. Thanks, Jazz. Now, do you think it's important that, well, I mean, you're a great-looking guy, even though your girlfriend is a cheap tramp. But do you think it's important that rock and roll bands look good, or is it about the music? Like I said, I'm a creature with two faces, babe, yourself. you know? An angel and a devil. And that means it's really important to look good. Music cannot stand on its own. You need to look good singing it. I'm tired of people saying all we care about is partying and that we can't play. If we couldn't play, people wouldn't come to our concerts. We're not going away, and if we do, it won't be on purpose. Where are we, dear Creek? We're on the radio, love. Stop dragging me down. I told you, if you ride a whirlwind, don't, don't be surprised when the dawn breaks. Where were we? Ugh, she's really getting on my nerves. Why are you waving your hands at me? Oh, I'm supposed to go to commercial. I'll be right back. Alex, welcome to Farewell Ranch. They say the golden years are the best years of your life, but for many seniors, they just stink up the house and make the grandkids feel uncomfortable with unbounded affection. Now, your old people can be earning you money and enjoying the final years of Farewell Ranch. It's a working farm, cattle ranch, and crematorium where the cowboys are all over 75. They'll enjoy rodeos, working in the fields, and tending all the final resting places of their new friends on Sunshine Hill. 
Farewell ranch folks, your loved ones from sun up to sun down. And when your loved ones passes away, we'll send you a presentation package VHS with the spurs and boots they're wearing as they went on to a better world. Our residents show sure love it here. Right, Norm? Is this WW2? Farewell ranch, the only way to ride into the sunset. Dessert funny. Asian pajamas? Chinese bandana? Something missing? With a throwing star, kendo sticks, or nunchucks at Vice City's one stop shop for the silent fashion assassin. Wow, you look like a psycho. Complete the look. Hi, I'm Amy, and you're on K Chat. Jazz, you were telling me about the music? Ah, yeah. You know, we wear these costumes to appeal to the working man. Because after you spend the day working in a steel mill, you want to wear tight leather clothes and play air guitar. That's what we're about. The recent album was a musical trip through hell, and I think it shows. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, I saw Satan. He didn't like what he saw in me. He saw darkness, but also a Jesus. Ask man, I can find treasure in the dark. It's that. It's that. Thing? Yeah, that's the thing that typifies me as an artist. Heart and soul. Head, trousers. Everything. That's what you get at one of my shows. Jazz Torrent and Love Fest will really show you, you know. We take the soul into darkness. Bring your lighters. You know, I invented that. I'm about had out of wankers ripping off my vibe. I wore women's clothing first. Why? Because it tells you about light and darkness. Like the moon. But seriously, you've got great eyes, really. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jazz. I've always thought your music really lets people see into your soul. Right, into great big pools of pain like me, dangerous bastard. You see, babe, I've had my heart broken, but I'm still a man. I'm working on a song right now called Fallen Stars on Shattered Dreams in the Rain. It's about being able to communicate through music rather than words. It's set in a wind tunnel. That's why there's a huge snake painted on my jacket. The snake symbolizes kind of a subconscious power force. Because life is pain, babe. And without music, I'd be lost. This new album is our most mature work yet. I am brilliant on it, because I sing from the heart. About heartbreak? Babe, 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 don't go there, please. You do your show a favor, take it easy. My people spoke to your people about this. And seriously, I appreciate the offer. And look, I would shag you. But you have to understand, it's too soon. Because Shari left you, right? Babe, babe, my people spoke about this to your people. I said, do not mention Shari. It's like sticking needles in my soul. Voodoo. Who are you? Are you my personal devil? That you could do this to me? The pain is too much. I have hair in my face to hide my soul. Shari had to go because she wanted to be a Marine. We couldn't be together. Seriously, don't go there. <laughs> this is so sad. Do you have a tissue out there? Oh, Jazz, I'm so sorry. Seriously, love, if you listen to the song Dragon Eyes, it says everything that needs to be said about her. You can't help me. It's raw, like a chicken's head, you know? The pain it grips you and makes you think about everything. It's the longest night of all. December of the soul. Jazz, this has been the best interview of my life. Thanks so much for coming on. For all you Love This fans out there, it's time for a contest. That's right, ladies and gents, you're listening to me, Jess Torrent and Kate Chan, being interviewed by... By... It's Amy? Oh, God. You forgot my name? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Citizens of Vice City, now you've got the opportunity to win a part of me, my signature. Inc. I only give away parts of myself to people who have bought all our records. So you've got to answer this. On which album did Beast Fist appear? Was it A, Dogs on so Heat, B, Fat Chicks All Day All Night, or C, 
devil's own band. For the chance to win tons of Love Fist prizes, just answer the question. All you need to do is write the answer on a postcard and send it into the station. Jazz, before you go, will you please play us a song acoustic? Piss off! Acoustic songs are for sissies. Babe, seriously, do not cramp my style. Look, I've got to save up the love for the big show. Babe, I love you. I really do. Friends for life, dancing in the fire and all that. Always good to me. You look after man for us, will you? Oh, I lost my lighter again. Love first! That was the dreamy jazz torrent of Love Fist, who are appearing this week in Vice City as part of their world tour. Bring your lighters and a spare pair of panties. I know I will. We'll be right back on K-Chat after these messages. Thanks. What makes a real American? A cowboy hat? Enjoying a fine T-bone steak? Going to a baseball game? Shooting a gun? Maybe it's the freedom to go into a poor country and tell them how to do things. Heh, <laughs> those are all great qualities. But one thing that makes a true patriot is the ability to choose an American car. When you buy an import, you take a hot meal off a hard-working American's table. There, there. This poor girl is going to starve to death just because you bought a cheaper, more efficient Maibatsu. Without gross symbols of excess, what will Americans have to look up to? Our great industries are threatened. Cars, pornography, armaments, and they need your help. So the next time you buy a car, a piece of adult literature, or a missile defense system, make sure you do the American thing. Old Max, we go everywhere together. Right, boy? At Pet Stuffers, we know there's nothing like a relationship between a man and his dog. Sometimes you just can't let go. Max, you didn't eat your food. That's the second week in a row. Max? When the unspeakable happens, just put your four-legged friend in the refrigerator or freezer. Then call Pet Stuffers. We'll be there within a week to pick him up, and in less than a month, he'll be back as good as new. Through an ancient Egyptian miracle process called taxidermy, you and your best friend will always be together. Yeah, that's a good dog. Pet Stuffers, when you just can't let go. And coming soon, grandparents forever. I am. The key to feeling great is looking great. And the way to look great is to have great hair. That's great. Take your hair higher. Take your hair to the limit. Sissy spreads when you're clubbing or sticking your head out of a stretch limo sunroof. You want to know your hair is performing to the limit. Higher. Gonna get higher than the sky. With Sissy Spritz, it's hair for the future, not the past. When you have great hair, people know you're a winner. Sissy Spritz may cause dry mouth, dilated pupils, paranoia, heart palpitations, and nosebleeds. Touch your hair will be great. This is Kate Chat. Welcome back to the show. I'm Amy Schechenhausen, and next up, we're going to be interviewing someone with a lot to say for herself. A woman who pretended to be a man and then wrote a book about it. I haven't read it. But I'm going to read it. She's professor of anthrosociology and women's studies at the University of Vice City. And her name is Michaela Krapis. Krapitis. Michaela. Michaela. Hi. Welcome to K-Chat. Hello. Hi. So, Michaela, you're a teacher. If you mean professor. seeing any booty here. 